There's a lot of people on here right now. So I assume there are some that have seen this before or are already familiar with valence. Please stick around. This one's going to be a special one. We're going to have some really cool things to show you on this one. So uh, just do some introductions here. Um, Patrick, and, and, and also on the information about the Lunch and Learn, it was supposed to be Rob Swanson and myself. Rob is on, but he's going to be doing Q&A answers only. Um, I'm going to be doing like the, the hosting portion of the CNX portion. And I'm the co-founder and managing director of CNX. And so I'm going to do like quick overview for people to tell you what Valence is. And I'm going to talk about the anatomy of a Nitro app. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. I'm going to explain that. And then also we have Sean Langtree on as well. And he is our uh, director of professional services. And he also does our training. So he's like the perfect guy to do a demonstration. He's going to create an IBM I app from scratch. And there's like a really cool twist on it, uh, which is sort of a surprise I'll talk about in the last slide of this presentation. So <clears throat> for those of you who have never heard of Valence, don't know what it is, basically, if you had to you know, sum it up in one sentence, it's a suite of development and runtime software that handles all IBM I application needs. Okay, so if you're a developer involved with the development, it's got everything in there you need to develop modern applications, but it also has all the stuff you need to do the runtime as well. If you create a web-based application for your users, you know, how are you going to deploy that to your end users? How are you going to deploy it only to certain users? How are they going to log in? How are you going to manage sessions? All that stuff is included in balance. And it is native to the IBM I. A majority of all the services on the back end are provided by RPG web services, basically. So it is native to IBM I. Um, I do mention this because I had so many questions in the past over these demos about people. People would ask me like, well, there must be some kind of Windows server external to the IBM I doing all this. Nope, there's no external servers required. Valence is super easy to install. You just install it to your IBM I, and then you go to the URL to log in, and you'll see that in, in our demo. So no external servers, and you do have to have IBM I 7.2 or higher. All right. So sometimes I, I take some time to describe all of these. I'm not going to go through all of these because I'm really excited to get to the demo portion. So I'm just going to like list all these out and then just talk about a few of them. So the Valence portal is what I mentioned earlier. That's going to handle user login, session management, um, role-based security, like what certain users only get access to certain applications and things like that. That's what the Valence portal is. And that... There's administrative tools for, for the admin, whoever's administering, and then there's the, the part that the users use. So that's a really important piece. Um, I'll jump down and talk about the Fusion 5250. That is a, a web-based emulator that runs right within Valence. Uh, we have a lot of customers that like deploy old green screen applications to you know Chrome, uh, Chromebooks and things like that. Um, and you know, we have customers that like have new modern valence applications, but they still have like old applications that they need to run side by side. So it allows you to run old and new simultaneously in the same sort of like valence ecosystem. So that's why we have that there. I mentioned like a lot of other utilities. There's a lot of features here that are not listed, like Excel generations, PDF, spool file viewers for users to look at spool files. Everything can be done through the web interface. Okay. Um, and of course, I put a star next to Nitro App Builder because that's the tool that we are going to use to do the uh, application today. And that really is the feature within Valence that drives most of our sales. Like when customers um, and companies are looking at Valence to solve their problems, all the other things that Valence has in it are needed, right? They're sort of like the, the supporting cast, right? But what is driving them to look at Valence is really the Nitro App Builder. They need to be able to create applications, good modern applications, quickly and efficiently. And that's what the Nitro App Builder does. So that's why it has a star. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about the Nitro App Builder. Um, it's really classified as like a low code builder, right? You can, with no coding, create user interface elements like what's listed here, charts, maps, other components, anything visual we call that a widget in, in, in our terminology with no programming. You just use the web interface to, to do this as a programmer. Then 
in order to get what we call a Nitro app, you can take any of these visual elements and put them on a canvas and they become an application. And then we have what we call behaviors, which are really just like actions that the user can take. Okay, so if you have a button on the screen or, or on the page and the user clicks that button, well, what happens? Does, does some uh, list of things update? Does a map update? You know, that's, we call those behaviors. So once you do all that and put that together as an application, then you can deploy those applications through the valence portal. And that's how your users will interact with those applications. Okay, so that's a really super simplified, you know, what is Nitro App Builder? Um, I really like talking about the why do we have something like Nitro App Builder? Because over the years, maybe it's tapering off a little bit, but over the years, I have a lot of developers come to me after seeing a Nitro App Builder demonstration to be like, I'm a developer, I write code, okay? Um, I, why I don't want to use something like a Nitro App Builder? Well, <laughs> uh, over the years, we found that, okay, you can do everything you know, manually if you want. But in our experience, it takes far too long, right, to create and deploy applications that are really truly modern for your IBM I users. And, you know, in our experience, you know, businesses, the companies you're working for, the expectations have changed so much over the years. They really expect things to be done quickly. What used to take years or months, now it's expected, the expectation is that it can be done in hours. And if you can't do it, somebody else will be able to do it faster and more efficiently, right? So we need to, as developers, really use more tools. The stuff that Patrick was talking about in the code is also very important. You need to understand the low level things of what's going on in many cases, right? But in order to be more productive, you need to use tools like Nitro App Builder. So another reason is like, Truly modern user interfaces, if we're being honest with ourselves, you know, we, we, we see a lot of products in the IBM I space that call themselves, you know, modernization tools, but then the output of them is really something that looks like it was produced in like 2005 or something, really not super modern looking, right? Really modern user interfaces require a high skill set to be able to do that and do have a long learning curve. And, uh, you know, I don't know what your experience is, but like we have found that development resources or good development resources are scarce. And if you do find good development resources, they're usually expensive. So Nitro App Builder and tools like Nitro App Builder are helping companies do more with less, right? That's what we're all trying to achieve here. So now I'm going to move into a little bit of technical explanation just to sort of set up Sean's demo a little bit more technically. So when we're creating a Nitro app, the first thing you're going to see Sean do is to create a data source. And I'm not talking about like creating a data table or anything like that. I'm talking about more of like creating, how do you get to the data? Like the SQL statement. Okay. Um, or you can use a wizard in, in valence to create what we call a data source. That's really just the definition of where is my data. Okay. And then once you have that set up in, in valence nitro app builder, then you can attach those visual elements we call widgets, right? So, in this case here, we have a grid widget, which is really sort of like a subfile, just a list of things, or you can attach a chart to it. And this is showing that, hey, you can have more than one graphical element attached to the same data source, okay? And then once you have some widgets defined, you can have one or more of those go into then creating a Nitro app. It's also important to know you can have an unlimited number of data sources and you know they can all uh, go into, uh, uh, a num any number of data sources and widgets attached to different data sources, and they can all go into the same Nitro app. And individual graphical elements can participate in more than one Nitro app. Like, for example, you can have like a, say you have a map widget where uh, that's tracking like the locations of trucks around the city. Um, you know, and you may have that participating in multiple different applications where users may need to see where that where that is. And you only, so you only have to maintain that widget one time. All right, now I'm going <clears> to <throat> sort of rearrange the list of things a little bit here to put the app level in the upper left so I can talk about the behaviors. So a behavior, just like I talked about earlier, is sort of like an action that the user can take, right? So in this example, <clears throat> like let's say the user clicks on a bar that may be on a chart widget. Well, once the user clicks that, it could update a list, you know? Um, another behavior could be like if they clicked on a row on a grid, maybe that updates a map, like say maybe the grid had like an address in there 
And now we're showing that address on the map. And then finally, another example could be, suppose there's a button on the grid widget, and then I can call some special operation in RPG, something outside the base graphical capabilities of Nitro App Builder. You can just write that in manual code, and then it can call that process. Or it could be something you have existing already. All right. So that's sort of like the technical setup. And now I'm going to announce, for those of you who have stuck around because I gave a little a uh, teaser on this at the beginning about a special announcement. We have something new coming out um, this month in Valence 6.3. We're calling the Valence Assistant. And this is an AI service provided by CNX. Super excited about this. It'll become available in Valence 6.3. Should be released within the next few weeks. I'm not giving a complete, a specific date on it because anytime I put out a date, it, we always slip or something. It's never the exact date. We're just saying within the next few weeks, we're we're crossing the T's and dotting the I's, as they say. Um, and right here on this demo, on this uh, lunch and learn session, we're going to be demoing it for the first time. Now we've we've shown some close customers that we work with and trialed this, uh, you know, privately, but this will be the first time we're really doing it sort of publicly. And also, what you'll see in this demo is really just just the beginning. OK, um, it's super useful today. And then over time, we'll probably be adding a lot more things as as we see how customers use it and, and where we can help. So for years, Valence and especially the Nitro App Builder has been an excellent tool for assisting the user, uh, the developer and being more productive. And now this Valence, Valence Assistant just takes it to a whole new level. OK, and I think you'll see that like uh, creating SQL statements becomes like really super easy, especially if you're not really, if you're, if your person's not super comfortable in SQL or it takes you a long time to create an SQL statement, this could be really helpful. If you're not great at like laying out form fields and things like that, the, the valence assistant can be super helpful. So I know AI is like all the rage, right? Everybody's trying to do AI this and AI that, and we're trying to be really super practical with it and implement it in ways that we really feel will help the developer be more productive. We're not just throwing out AI just for the sake of AI. We're really only implementing it where we see it will lead to productivity increases. Okay, so now it's time for the demo. And so I'm just going to remind everybody in the Q&A, as Sean is doing the demo, I will monitor the Q&A and I'll sort of answer questions as Sean. I may even stop Sean and ask him to clarify something or whatever. So you can post things in the QA to me. And um, just for like a minute or two, I'm going to show a brief demo of the Valence portal just to get things started off. And then I'll transition to Sean. So let me end the presentation here and flip to my browser. Okay, so I'm at the login page. This is Valence 6.2. Sean will be demoing 6.3. I didn't want to mess with Sean's environment there. So I'm in, this is sort of the stable version of, of Valence right now, the one we already have out on our website if you try to download it. Um, and this is the Valence portal. And you can see we have multiple languages uh, here. You know, if you wanted to switch it to Spanish, everything would switch to Spanish. And uh, when you logged in, everything would be in Spanish. Um, that's just one of the features that's built in. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in here. And so I am an administrator, so I see everything. So each one of these little, we call these tiles. So each one of these little squares is a tile and that represents launching an app, just like you would on your smartphone, right? An icon represents launching an app. And since I'm an administrator, I have like portal administration here and here's all my settings for valence. I can administer users. I can administer different applications, uh, all these different things. There's many different ways to administer the portal. Um, this is what we call Valence Instance Manager. So uh, we use this system for training. So the, the, all the, these squares here represent different instances, which are logical separate instances of Valence running on the same logical partition. And you can manage those differently. Active sessions of users. I'm not going to click into every single one of these. Um, if the system encounters any errors, uh, you know, they'll be recorded in here. Uh, you get statistics on user applications, uh, how, you know, how users are using the applications and statistics around that. 
there's really an awesome full-blown file editor, which, you know, by itself is really an amazing feature, but this is just sort of, oh, these utilities are just sort of like thrown in with valence um, to increase productivity. And to, as, like I said earlier, our goal is to sort of keep you in the valence environment, not have to bounce around to a lot of different things. So we try to include as many tools as we can. So for example, you can just go into um, a table you know, you can do all this with SQL, but this is just sort of like a productivity tool, right? You can go in records and maintain records and things like that. Obviously, you probably don't want to deploy that to your end users. That's an administrative tool. There's the Nitro App Builder, which Sean will demonstrate. Um, spool File Viewer is like a really cool thing to be able to, you can deploy this to your users. And since this is a test system, I don't have a lot of outcues on here. But as you can see, I can just go in and look at this job log um, and see it right on the screen. I can download it to a PDF. I can then email it to somebody. You know, that that's sort of another built-in feature. Users love this to be able to just get their spool files, you know, on their own and pass them around an email and things like that. There's the Fusion 5250, which uh, it is surprisingly popular, especially for companies that want to deploy a lot of old applications to uh, like Chromebooks and things like that. Um, because it it really scales well. Like you have thousands of users on this because it does not use Java. It uh, is sort of like a native emulator that running in the browser. Uh, we could spend a whole session just on a lot of these different features. So I'm just sort of going through them quickly. Um, we also have some example Nitro apps in here. Um, like for example, you know, this is like an order entry app where you can say, okay, for this list of customers, I can say, okay, I'm adding a new order for this customer. And this is where the customer is located. I picked a customer that had no location, of course, <laughs> on the map. Uh, there's 81 orders that are late and that's the list of orders. So that's sort of like an order management app. Um, there's like a sales dashboard example. All of the colors you see here and the layout, all this is totally modifiable. And if you're not that great of a user interface designer, like if you're an old school RPG program or whatever, we try to make things as clear as possible for that audience. Okay. So like as an old, if you're an old school RPG developer, you've been using IBM I for a long time, or if you've tried to implement uh, different modernization things in the past, we try to make this all like feel right to you. Like it's the right way of doing it. And uh, you know, we, 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 we have a lot of things in here that make it just make sense for people like that. Um, let's see. I think I've shown everything that I wanted to show briefly. And Sean is going to take it over now and go into the Nitro App Builder and uh, create an app for us. What do you think, Sean? Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, as Richard mentioned, I will be doing the demo, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give as much explanation as I can as I'm doing this stuff. But time constraint, you know, I want to get everything done, so I'm gonna be kind of flying through this stuff. <laughs> um, I want to show you first, I created some uh, wireframes of, of what we're going to create first. So this is an application called products. We have a list of products and we have a, a bar chart showing top sales. If I click a product, we'll pop up a window that shows more information about that product. Um, as Richard mentioned earlier, you know, we have data sources, widgets, and then an application. The application will be products. I'm going to create a data source called products. And then off of that data source, we'll create a product list. I just wanted to get that clear first so you could kind of uh, understand what we're doing, what we're trying to build first. So I'm going to log in. And I'm going to click the Nitro App Builder application. So upon starting Nitro App Builder, you have two sections, data sources and widgets. And we're, we're gonna work in data source and widgets first. I need to create my first data source. So if I click this plus button, there, there are a couple of ways to create data sources. We could do like a wizard type setup. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna click add data source. And here we can type in any SQL statement. I'm gonna use, as Richard was mentioning earlier, the, the valence assistant to help me here. So the first part of this is it's asking me, do I want to pass some file definitions? So this isn't data, it's just passing the definition of the file. In other words, the, 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 the column name and the column description. So we have 
a table called VX products. So I'm going to send that. It gives me the list of everything, you know, that, that it'll pass. You know, if I say, oh, don't, don't include this field, I can uncheck it. Um, in my data source, I want to have all products. And then I want to get, the, I, I also want the total sales of the products and the total on-hand inventory. So I'm also going to include an order detail file. And then I'm also going to include an inventory file. So now I press continue. So here, you know, we just kind of describe it and give some samples of what, you know, what, what you might, what you might ask. Um, I'm going to ask, I'm just going to paste this in. So save myself some typing here. I want all product columns and I want a total of sales, quantity sold and the on-hand inventory for each product. So let me just ask it. So this is interpreting, you know, my file structures now and hopefully coming up with a useful SQL statement. So it did, um, you know, it was smart enough to say, oh, let me do the mappings here. And I can also go back and forth with it. Like I might say, yeah, you know, uh, I want to use, use sub queries instead of the summary columns. You know, so now we'll take that statement and hopefully, you know, change it how I asked. So let me just give it a second here and wait. And okay, so I'm just going to click copy and paste. It's going to bring it in and I'm going to go to preview. So that gave me my data source. I'm going to save this and I'm going to call it products. So now you see we have a data source called products. I can create widgets off of my data source. So I'm gonna to go to create widget. First I'll click here and just show you, here are the various widgets you can create. I'm gonna create a grid. Because remember what I'm creating is this, I'm gonna create this list here. So I'll include product. It's asking me what columns do you want to include in your list? Description, UPC code, uh, class, unit of measure, and let's say price. I'm just going to go here to take a look and see. This is kind of a, a this is a preview of what it'll look like, and I might want to change some things. I don't I don't like the, uh, the heading of unit of measure. I want to shorten it, make it UOM, and I want this to be formatted as money. So I'll just click in here, do UOM. Maybe I'll center align it on my price. I'll go to formatting, and then we have all sorts of built-in formatters. I'm going to choose this money. Let's just take a look at it. Okay, looking better, I'm going to remove paging. Notice it's paging my results, and then I'm gonna add a search. So I'm just gonna add a built-in search here. So that way I could type in and you know it'll limit my results. So let's just save this as product list. Now I'm gonna go to apps. I'm gonna create our app in stages. So apps, add app. First thing it's asking me, what widget do you want? What widgets? I only have one. I'm going to add it. I'm going to put an app art title called products, and I'm going to save this. I'm taking all the defaults. This kind of gets into what Richard was alluding to earlier with administration. We could change all this later, but I'm just taking all the defaults. And now I should have this products app available. So here's my products apps. And it doesn't really do much now. It's just a grid, right, that I can search. So Let's create this now. So I'm gonna create a new data source called product sales summary, and I'm gonna create a bar chart over that. So going back into App Builder, and I'm gonna to go to data source and widgets, and I'm creating another new data source, okay? And in this case, I will, um, let's see here. I'll, I'll use the, uh, I'll use the assistant again. So VX products. And then I also want order detail. And per product, give me the total sales for the current year. And how about the previous, the previous year? Order the data, sorry, order the data by sales descending for the current 
here. Okay, let's see it. I think that looks good. So let's just preview the data and it looks like I'm getting by product, current year sales and previous year sales. Good. So let me save this and I will call it product sales summary. So now right away, I'm gonna create that bar chart against it. So I'm gonna to go to create widget, charts, a bar chart. Okay. So charts, what are the data fields? Well, I want the uh, current year sales. I want the previous year sales and my label will be product. So now to lay the chart out, I'm gonna limit it to the first 10 results. Okay. And I'm going to put a title on this and call it top sales. And these, this data here should be money. So I'll represent it as money. So I'll go to data access and click the formatting, make it money. And I'll put a legend on here as well. So the legend will go up top. This will be called current year. And this will be called previous year. Okay, and let's just save it. And we will call this the product sales bar. Okay, so now I have you know, another widget. So I'm gonna go back to my app and I'm gonna just click the app to go in edit mode. And I'm gonna add my other widget. So I'm just gonna click add product sales. It's gonna put it to the bottom, but now I can hover over and I'll get arrows to move it. Yeah, I wanna move it up. Okay, and I'm gonna go to settings here. And I can you know, adjust the margin. I'm just going to make the, the left margin zero here. And let's see. Let's, let's put a theme on the app, too. I'm going to go to theming, and I'm going to make it uh, this one. Save. Let's save the app. So now I want to relo reload this app. I want to run it again. I can close the app and, and, and run it again. And that should look different. OK, so now we got our two widgets. So now I need to put in this part. When I click we show a pop-up window, right? So if I go back, sorry, I'm gonna use the same data source, but I'm gonna create a new widget called product form. So back to app builder, back to data source and widgets, products, create widget, form. Okay, so typically the form, you select the fields you want. I'll just do that quickly to show you. I might say, yeah, you know, I want these to be editable. Um, you know, and it kind of just lays it out. I can group the fields if I wanted to, but I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to use the valence assistant to just try and do its best. Okay. So um, I'm just going to uncheck this and just let it do its thing. So let's, uh, I just want to give it like a, a brief explanation of what I wanted to do. So use all available columns. Um, this form is showing attributes of a product, uh, group, group it as you see fit. And then, I don't know, maybe feel free to change field labels, you know, like maybe it doesn't like standard costs. It's going to change it. All right. Let's just see what we get So it's it it knows about all of our data here, and it's going to try and group it appropriately. Um, let's see. So when it comes back, there we go. So you know, it kind of gave me this this object showing me what it wants to do, and all the way at the bottom here, I could just hit apply. I'm gonna hit apply, and it did something, and let's see what happens. Okay, so it so it changed it for me. Okay. You know, I might I can I can then further refine it. Like I might change the number of columns here to just say one to just go top down. I could have chatted back and forth with the assistant to tell it to do it, but I didn't. Um, I'm just gonna refine this a little bit, like maybe on our pricing fields, you know, I'll I'll format it as money, like standard cost should be money, um, default price should be money and sales should be 
money. And let's just see what it looks like. Okay, let's save it. Product form. Okay, I'm going back to the app. I'm going to incorporate it. I'm going to add a widget. I'm going to hover over. I'm going to add it as a pop-up. So now when I click this row, I want that pop-up to show. Richard mentioned behaviors earlier. I'm going to go into behaviors. No time to explain this, but here's my product list. On a row click, it does nothing. No action. Well, I want it to filter a widget. What widget do you want it to filter? The form. Okay, tell me the relationship of how do I filter this data down? Well, I know my database. It's product to product. Save, save, save. And I'm going to rerun my app. I'm going to do a shortcut. If I right click and do reload frame, it's the same thing as me closing it and opening it. So now let's see when I click this. Good. Got it. Let's go to step two. I want to change this a little bit. Now when I click, I want to go to a whole new section with some more data. And then it, this just kind of takes me back, back and forth. Okay. So I'm going back into App Builder. And we are going to create yet another data source. We're going to create one that has inventory. This time, I'm just going to do it like this. Select star from VXINV. No, you know, I don't want to overkill. No reason to use the assistant here. Product inventory, I'll call it. And I will create a grid off of this. So uh, let's take warehouse, aisle, row, tier, and on hand. I'll change the field labels. Call this row, tier. Um, I'm going to set all the widths to be equal. And I'm going to center align these. And I want to summarize the on-hand on quantity. I want to total it up. OK, so let's just see what this looks like so far. OK, I'm going to remove paging. And how about we give it a title of inventory? OK, save. This is the product inventory list. OK, now I want to create a uh, kind of like a sales breakdown. So if I go back, I want to create a sales breakdown of this product. So I'm going to go back into a data source and widgets. And once again, I'm going to use this, the assistant because this is kind of a complicated statement. Um, I know I need my order header. I know I need my order detail. Oop, I think I had a space there. And I also want my customer header because I want to be able to extract the customer name. And let me continue. And let's say, let's, um, let's summarize product sales and quantities by customer name and year. So basically I want I want five columns. I want the customer name, the order year, the product, how about total QTY and total sales. So it should honor those names that I gave it and you know actually make those the the, the, the column names. At least that's the hope. Let's see. All right. Uh, looks looks good to me. Let me copy and paste it in. Let's preview it. Okay. Let's save it. I'm going to call this the product product sales breakdown. And then I'm going to create my grid off of this. So right away, I'm going to create a grid. And let's see. Let's uh, let's include the customer, the year the quantity and the sales. I don't need to include the product because I'm going to go into the product. So we'll call this customer, we'll call this year. Uh, let me center align it. Uh, I'm going to put some hard coded widths on these, 150 pixels each, we'll say. And this will be quantity and this will be sales. I want to total up the quantity. I want to total up, total up the, the summary. And let's just put some formatters. I'll, I'll put a formatter on the quantity as well. I want it com I want commas in my numbers, let's say. 
And let's go to configure and we'll give it a, uh, a title of sales breakdown, let's say. Sales breakdown. And I will remove paging. And I think that's good. I think that's what we want. Let's uh, save it. Product sales breakdown list. Now I'm going to add these into my app. So first thing I want to do is I'm, I'm going to add an entirely new section. An app can have more than one section. I just created a details section, and then we also had our main section. Every app has a main section. So I'm going to go into my details section, and I'm going to add the widgets that I want. So just to refresh ourselves, you know, we started here. I click. I want to go into a new screen, a new section. I'm going to reuse my product form. And I'm going to put in my two new widgets here, and I'm going to have a back button to go back. Okay. So I'm in my details section, which is blank right now. I'm going to click Add Widget. I can go to Current Widgets and say, well, yeah, actually, I want to move this current product form into this, into this uh, section. So I'm just going to click that. And now I'm going to add Widget. I'm going to add a utility widget here just to show you different things. We can have a vertical layout. I'm just going to give it a name of right because it's going to be on the right hand side of the screen. Now I can move that. So now I'm going to add this is think of this as a parent. I'm going to add my two widgets into this parent here. OK, let me just go to the settings here. I'm just going to remove some just clean up my margins a little bit. OK, I'll put a zero margin here. OK. So now that's kind of, that's looking like what we want. So now when I click this list, I need to, you know, make it go to that section. So that's back in behaviors. If I go to my product list, we already have that filter widget from the product form, right? So that, that one's good, but I have two other widgets I want to filter down now. My product inventory, which will be product to product. And then I want to also filter down my product sales breakdown. And if I look down here, there's product, product, save. And then I'm going to do another. There's all sorts of actions you could do. One of them, the thing I want to do here is I want to show section detail. Okay. And I also want to add a back button to my detail section. So I can just click here, add button. I don't want any text. I'm just going to choose a nice icon, like a back icon. I'm going to put it at the top, align it to the left, save, on click, show previous section, save, save, and let's retry it. Okay, here we go. All right, back. Okay, these totals should all match. We got the 24036, the 8883885, the total on hand. So. There we go. We, I'm happy we got through both iterations of, of the app. I know I flew <laughs> and didn't give much explanation, but there's, you know, there's a lot more you can do. We're just creating a simple display only dashboard. So any questions? Uh, Sean, I did have a question from the Q&A section uh, that maybe you could talk about. It doesn't have anything to do with the AI stuff, but it's about uh, change management. Um, somebody was asking, uh, somebody named Dean has asked, uh, like, if you have an app in development, how would you move that to like QA and live? Yeah. Uh, would you mind just showing that? Sure. So I'm an app builder, and as Richard showed earlier, I can remember he went into the instance manager. So let's just see, do we have, we do have, we have some instances here. So I'm in the VV demo 6.3. There are two other instances. There's a base instance, and then I, we have this other VV serve 6. So let's just pretend I'm in the development instance, which is demo. And let's pretend this is the QA instance, VV serve 6. There's a number of ways I could do this. I can go to export to instance. And what that'll do is that'll export the application into that other instance. And it's just telling me what it's going to do. Um, you know, alternately, if it's, let's say it's on another system, I could just export the save file. You know, Sean testing, I'm just putting a note. 
and this will create a save file. So this is a save file that I can move to another system. I can see it here too, like you will be able to see, this is the one I just created, this, this save file here. So yeah, we have ways of, you know, exporting apps, widgets, data sources, you know, this is all, I'm at a data source now, I could do it at that level too. I'll just uh, add to that as well, that uh, there is like an exit program too, that you can use to call your own, maybe existing change management system, or, um, you know, if you have to, if you have to like register something, there's an exit program for that, for, for that integration. Um, and I also wanted to say, like, as I was watching Sean go through that, you know, it's amazing to me as a, as a valence developer, like part of my job is I've worked with customers to develop applications or help them develop applications with valence and Nitro app builder. And just like, I am just so blown away by how fast you can do like the SQL statements and then also lay out forms. And maybe it's not perfect on the first call, but then you can adjust it. Like it's unbelievable time saver. Um, and I really, just personally speaking, I really want to get this to as many customers as I'm working with as quickly as possible because the productivity increase is going to be incredible. So Sean, can I just ask you, like, yeah. this is real. This is really the first time that you've done a demo where there was no pre-defined components. Like, uh, normally, what we do in a like a ten-minute creation of a of, of an app is we'll create a grid or something, something that's like fast, right? Like, you've got things here where you know you've got a grid, you've got a form. Like, how much time would it have taken you to even using Nitro App Builder? to have created all of this with all of the, the headings and the chart and the form and the form layout and the SQL statements, like how, just thinking of how long you took, how much time would it have taken to do this manually? Oh, like a manually coded application? Yeah. No, no. Like in Nitro App Builder without the AI, without the, oh, valence without the AI, without the valence assistant. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, you on I mean, in, a bit yeah, right. I mean in, in this case, you know, I mean, those SQL statements were fairly simple, uh, mm -hmm. but it, it does help. And then, you know, that form. So like the, we've worked with forms that have hundreds of columns and, and that's a real pain to, uh, to, to organize. And not only that, sometimes we're working on a customer system and we don't know their business. And I don't know in the insurance term of, you know, X, Y, Z, but that does. So mm -hmm. it, it does a good job of, of grouping things. So in, in, in terms of like a form, like it, it could save me hours, mm -hmm. that day, let's say, you know, and then do it in 20 seconds. So, but yeah, I mean, like you said, it's all new. So I don't, I don't have a great grasp on everything right now. I know it saves time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like I just, as I was watching you do this, like you're just sort of nonchalantly going through and you've created this SQL statement that's summarizing columns and then right. getting this form layout. And I'm just like, wow, that's like incredible, you know? And I, I'm usually downplaying everything. I'm like, just show the features and customers will decide on their own. But like, I personally am really excited about using this at customer sites. So I Maybe think I can sell you a license, Richard. You'll sell me a license, a personal yeah. license. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I would say, uh, I think, Sean, if you're finished, we can let Patrick uh, yes. go. Um, but real, I don't... real quick, uh, guys, uh, there's been a couple questions about examples, and I don't think you had a chance to show that on the portal. Maybe, Sean, you could just kind of show that there's a bunch of pre-built example apps out there. Yeah. And we haven't even talked about calling RPG programs and stuff, which is a big part of, of it, obviously, as an IBM I developer. Yeah. All right. Um, Sean, would you just for, um, just so people know, and we're seeing your screen at the moment, could you just go to cnxcorp.com so I can point out a few things? So if anybody wants to try Valence, you can just go to cnxcorp.com, click Downloads. Right now, you can trial Valence 6.2, which is the, the top one on the list. So you, if you just download it and follow the Valence installer, it's very easy to install and get started. And that'll help you. You know, you can play around with all the features in Nitro App Builder. It will not have the Valence Assistant in it. That is coming with Valence 6.3. But if you download the software, and we should have your email address from attending this uh, Lunch and Learn, you're going to get a follow-up from us. Um, 
I would say the most would be a few weeks, but probably sooner saying that Valen 6.3 is available. Then you can come and download that as well. And it'll just upgrade your 6.2 to 6.3. And then you can use the Valence Assistant 